All right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and there is uh, there is a lot of huge stuff to go over today. If you have not been here before, of course, we are going to be going over the current events. Uh, huge, huge, massive breaking news that came out about, of course, a strike back onto Iran from Israel. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, the infrastructure threats that are coming out. And we'll, we'll, we can argue later about the, you know, the legitimacy of what the FBI is saying. Uh, but it is pretty, pretty scary stuff if you actually consider what they're saying. It says that uh, FBI says Chinese hackers preparing to attack U.S. infrastructure. Chinese government linked hackers have burrowed into U.S. critical infrastructure and are waiting for, quote, just the right moment to deal a devastating blow. FBI Director Christopher Wray said on Thursday, an ongoing Chinese hacking campaign known as Volt Typhoon has successfully gained access to numerous American companies in telecommunications, energy, water, and other critical sectors, with 23 pipelines operators targeted, Ray said in a speech at the Vanderbilt University. China is developing the ability to physically wreak havoc on our critical infrastructure at a time of its choosing. Now, why would they do all of this if they weren't trying to do something? Now, there's the argument. Some people are like, oh, they're full of crap. It's them doing it. Either way, if, if there is a setup for an event, if all of a sudden an event happens, where are we going to look? We're automatically going to look there. Now, it is my personal belief, and I'm sure that there are people that are going to go against this. I actually do believe that this is going to happen uh, and that they are behind it. Uh, but who knows if they're high-fiving behind closed doors and making it announced uh, so people know about it. I don't know. Uh, but also, I, I believe that all of these countries have a goal, and they're all trying to take over their neighbor. They're all gathering. They're uh, talking with each other. They're doing all of this. And they have people on the inside in every country that they're targeting. Uh, as far as the stuff that was targeted, we know that uh, under uh, solar winds that very specific areas of our critical infrastructure was targeted, including the Black Start program. The Black Start program is the program that we have. Uh, it is the plan. If our grid went completely down, it would be our step by step for the entire country on what they would do to get it back up again. Now, if you have the plan on how and what we're going to do right after we lose power, then you can go to each one of those uh, intersections and stop it from progressing. They'll be able to say, okay, well, first they're going to get trucks and drive to this area to get a backup this or a backup that. Well, they could literally be there and stop that in its tracks. Or, oh, they will switch over to this. Well, then they can go and be ready to sabotage that, uh, that kind of thing. They also accessed areas uh, critical to energy, water, and other critical sectors, including the DMV, other things. And they access specific sections of them, like the HR department, the department that makes new employee badges, that makes key fobs or, or fobs to get into buildings. These are the kind of areas that were hacked into. Now, you've probably seen it on a, a movie like Terminator 2 with the kid where he has a credit card that is hooked up to a, a, a you know, a, a little computer that he plugs in and it just magically gets money out of the ATM. Uh, there are things like that. As far as what the nation states have, uh, they do have things like as far as uh, as key fobs that can get into any building or they would be able to hack into a system, then print themselves or uh, make their own key fobs to buildings that would have the right frequency to get in anywhere they want to get to. Uh, this is really, really scary stuff. Now, people are in our community argue about almost everything. Everybody is torn on what's really going to happen or if it's a distraction. I think that, uh, of course, you know, you're, you're on a level where these people at the very top, I think that people subconscious, they do, do not realize or they do not um, even process that people could be so messed up and not care about millions and millions of people uh, that people just think it couldn't be possible. Nobody could do that. Uh, but you understand that the people at the very top, if, if people were doing this and uh, they don't care about us, they care about their f personal circle of friends, they care about their family, they care about the people that even in their extended family, they care about them. They don't care about us. They don't care about people on the other side of the world, just as you don't. When you see uh, video after video after video of worldwide people getting punched or hurt or run hit over, it doesn't make you cry. <laughs> it, it, it's it's somebody you don't know. It's a shadow on a, a surveillance camera. That's what we are to them.
as far as if if you saw a video and it was somebody you know or a friend or family member and you go oh my gosh that's you know tom getting hit then yeah it affects you but human nature is is that if it's if it's somebody you don't know it's like oh that's really sad but it's not like it's going to tear you up for life these people do not care about us and by these people i mean everybody who is planning to take this whole thing and crush it if they want to put in a new system, they've got to take down the old one first. So we're going to talk about this today and a, wh a whole lot more. Uh, they struck back at the last hour of uh, darkness in uh, Iran, and they did it on somebody's birthday. So they definitely picked the timing of their, their strike back. And uh, we're going to look at what that means uh, for, for the future. So stick around. We'll be right back right after this. nothing in the show should be considered legal medical or financial advice the views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion dex's opinion or anyone else who works with the show you should always do your own research and consult with professionals the internet is full of fake news so please take everything with a grain of salt if you have not already it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. Red Pill said, I just checked uh, show notes. There's so much going on. So great, uh, great point. By the way, all of our stuff is uh, backed up on a bibliography over on marfuglenews.com. You just look for today's thumbnail. Now, the thumbnail might not have updated. It had a, a, another uh, thumbnail, but they had an issue with it, so we had to change it. Uh, but you will be looking for this thumbnail. <clears throat> And you'll be able to click that, and you'll get to the page with every single article, tweet, video, picture, document. Uh, there's actually more than what's even on here, and we'll be adding to this if there's any pertinent news that breaks during this show. Obviously, this was last minute. Uh, the the strike that went down, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about, of course, the... Uh, the CIA just did something crazy. The whistleblower, uh, Boeing, uh, we'll talk about the formal Navy, naval officer, uh, raid the, raised the alarm about world changing underwater UFO. That will be at the very end. So it, it's definitely not a show you want to miss. It is getting absolutely nuts. Everything is escalating. And this is what we predicted. Your friends and family that thought you were crazy, they're probably going to be asking you for advice now. And that's just straight up. <laughs> uh, it's par for the course. And then it says China is developing the ability to physically wreak havoc on our critical infrastructure at the time of its choosing. Ray said it was difficult to determine the intent of the cyber pre-positioning, which was aligned with China's broader intent to deter the U.S. from defending Taiwan. So they put it out in, in plain terms that this will coordinate with their taking of Taiwan. If you hear about how our president formally talked about uh, Taiwan and, and how everything here is going to be made in America again, everybody questioned, well, how is that going to happen? What do you mean everything is going to be made in America? It gave you the, the eerie feeling that very soon uh, we will not be working with China. At the very least, they also said at the same speech, he goes, oh, yeah, by the way, I also want to have the guy from Intel stand up. Uh, they are actually building and they're going to make semiconductor chips here. It sounds to me like Taiwan is going to be taken by China and there's not much that they can do about it because they're dealing with China. Or there's people on the inside that are going to, I don't know, not push back. I don't know. But it's getting absolutely nuts. Not to mention we have millions of people coming across in our south. And now there's a huge question if a lot of these folks are from all of our adversarial countries that they're here for a very specific reason. Now, I, I hear a lot of the, the criticisms and a lot of the stuff about uh, Mr. Ray, the FBI director. I totally hear you. Uh, I don't think many people trust uh, the three-letter agencies, no matter which one it is. 
But I will say this. They have also put out real information of real events, but what, what the motivation is the hidden thing. So it will be a real event, but the motivation behind it is the hidden thing. So we'll, we'll, uh, it will tie into the greater kind of picture, the bigger picture of today. So let's go over to the map and let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine, but wow, this is going to be a crazy ride for the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or more. Actually, I think this is this is, this is is the hot point. Now, let's have you talk about the, the threats towards a certain community, uh, the Jewish community yeah. ahead of profess, uh, Passover. Exactly. So, um, again, Christopher Ray made another comment speaking to security officials on Wednesday, saying that there were um, that the FBI is on alert for threats going after the community, um, the Israeli community, um, ahead of the big um, uh, holiday coming up, Passover, which starts, I believe, on the 22nd and goes through the end of the month. A lot of people had actually speculated that they were going to not strike because they were going to wait until after um, the holiday and then do something, but that would be pretty far out. Um, now they've struck, and if I guess if they retaliate again, it's probably going to carry conflict right into that holiday, which will also have a a different um, a different issue. We can we'll talk about as that comes to fruition if it does but nonetheless right now the the bureau is is basically warning people and telling people um to pay attention especially during their uh particular holiday that's coming up and telling them to watch out for um targeted type activities that may be happening at their events or at their locations um so that's the warning i, I think you know you you gotta take it with you know take the insight that you're getting from them when they Put these out. I know sometimes we look at these and they tell us about people on a certain side of the political spectrum and they tell us how bad they are. And that's, you know, we sort of, okay, well, let's roll our eyes at that one. But then sometimes they put these out and they're pretty significant. And given the the state of affairs right now, um, both sides are super heated on this, this event right now. So, yeah. And we're going to go back over the map, but I did want to show you, it's like, I don't know if this is a newer event or an older one, uh, but there's there there was a video, and I don't know when this video was actually from, uh, but I, this was a good example of the kind of events that they're talking about. Uh, they're talking about lone actors uh, doing horrible events. Uh, as far as this guy, this guy ran around a playground and I, it, this could be from 2015. It actually looks like it's more recent, but uh, it, it was such a weird video. It's like the guy literally looks like he's talking into his wrist and takes his like uh, his uh, necklace and he's like talking like this straight out of almost what it looks like in the movies of them going like, yep, I got him. Um, and he's running around in, in circles and trying to, you know, take people out with a sharp object. And it's like... It, are these kind of videos it's like this is he's wearing this the only thing that you would be able to tell where he's from is this hair dressing uh, otherwise he's just wearing like black shorts white tennis shoes a black shirt uh and a watch and then sunglasses he he looks more like you know some sort of agent than some other guy that's wearing some, one of these things right um, and I, I wondered like it was the purpose to make sure that people were like oh I think he was this eastern right it's like things like this. I, I just wonder about what's actually going on with the world and uh, who is actually behind all of it. Uh, but that's why people should be aware of their surroundings, whether you're at the playground or wherever. If you happen to get caught up in one of these crazy things, whether it be an op or not, be prepared. Know your exits. Uh, know how you can protect yourself or, of course, protect yourself with other means uh, if you get my meaning. Now let's go over to the map. Let's go over to Iran. Warns that it may change nuclear weapons stance in face of Israel and U.S. announces sanctions. So they already had said that they are straight up going to respond the second, even the tiniest event, uh, which we covered the other day, even the tiniest event that they were going to respond uh, to if Israel actually responded to their uh, response, right? So they did the strike the other day. They said this was in response to you taking out our embassy. And, of course, they said if Israel responds to us at all, then it's on like Donkey Kong. 
And uh, what's crazy is like you're thinking like, what if Israel did absolutely nothing? Would it all be over? Well, no, Th that can't happen because they're still in this uh, hostage situation and they're still in this back and forth. But it, it almost gave the impression was Iran saying, like, if you guys don't strike back, then we'll just cut everything and we'll call it even. But that's not what happened. Of course, now uh, we see that uh, Israel is and some are saying that they are bombing as we speak. It says Iran warns it may change their stance. The U.S. announced a fresh set of sanctions on Iran targeting the production of unarmed aerial vehicles Thursday as the Tehran warned Israel uh, it would review its official stance on nuclear weapons if its atomic facilities were attacked. Now, the, by the way, the first five minutes that this happened, there was somebody who was in Iran on a spaces. I, I just happened to be uh, telling my uh, sister about Twitter. She's never been on it. And I, I said, you know, there's these things called spaces. And I was popping in and I was even like saying like, oh, right now there's this and this and this. And I went into a spaces and they were talking about it as it happened. And they were like, something big just went down. There's, uh, you know, there's sirens, there's all sorts of things. And then somebody says they thought that it was nuclear facilities. So in the first like 10 minutes, this was out. A lot of people said that it hit nuclear facilities. That is not confirmed. We, I, I have not seen uh, exactly where they hit. But that was pretty scary to, to hear that live and to hear somebody that was like there going, oh, 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 my gosh, is this actually going down? It was pretty nuts. Uh, but they now are saying that the latest wave of actions Thursday by the United States and Iran come on the heels of Tehran's missile and drone attack on Israel last weekend. Senior Iranian Revolutionary Guards Commander Major General Ahmed Hagtaleb said in a brief comments on Iranian state media, Iran would, quote, reconsider its nuclear policy if the event of any such attack. Iran has now long maintained amid deep international skepticism that its nuclear program is for civilian energy purposes only. When pressed on this point, its officials often point to the fatwa or formal religious ban uh, on their acquisition, development, and use made by the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, uh, Iran's supreme leader in the 1990s. So, and then, but in the remarks quoted by the semi-official Tasnim News, uh, suggests that the country would change its formal nuclear doctrine if its nuclear facilities were directly attacked by Israel. So, kind of crazy considering in the first five minutes they said the that what they believed were attack were, were the nuclear facility. It says the threats of the regime Israel against Iran's nuclear facilities make it possible to review our nuclear doctrine and deviate from our previous consideration. Now, depending on who you ask, there are some folks on the internet, some with a ton of followers, that say that Iran has already uh, procured nuclear weapons, that they already have them uh, in stock. It, actually, what's weird is if you think about it, they have the underground uh, missile base. I wonder if it's underground far enough, could they actually have secret nuclear weapons that nobody knows about? Uh, but second, uh, some say that they already have the ability to do it. Obviously, I, I talked about the other night how they are constantly saying, oh, they have, you know, they may be able to make it in as little as 12 days or in the next six months. If they keep at this pace, then they'll be able to do that. I've seen it for years and I always thought it was weird. I'm like thinking in 12 days from now, shouldn't they have a nuke? But of course they have these reasons why they're not making the nukes. Um, or at least they say they're not. I personally think that they probably already have these things and they're buried underground with the rest of these uh, things and that they're hiding it. Something like this, they could all of a sudden switch on it, launch a single nuke, and then things really get uh, popped off. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. The sanctions, as far as the sanctions go, I, I, I talk to a lot of people that are just tired of hearing even the word sanctions because not a lot of uh, folks think that they work. Not, a, not as well as just straight up uh, threats of, you know, going after them. Washington Thursday said that it was putting a bevy of new sanctions on Iranian companies over the assault. Sanctions will hit Iranian companies involved in the manufacturing of drones, suppliers, and customers of one of its largest steel producers and automobile, uh, automobile companies tied to the IRGC and the Defense Ministry. Uh, they have designated the IRGC as a foreign organization. Iran used uh, drones and missiles in the large-scale attack against Israel that a U.S. officials say was thwarted by advanced airspace defense weaponry, partly in which was obviously uh, the U.S. So I guess we will see what is about to go down with that. 
Before we move on, make sure to go check out EMP Shield. This is a device that we have recommended for now years because we do believe that it will end up saving lives. Any of the affiliates that we have picked for our channel, affiliates meaning basically if you go purchase, we get a small commission, you get a discount, uh, are things that we think are either going to make your life comfortable, save your life during a disaster, or make it just easier uh, for any kind of storm or disaster uh, event. Uh, EMP Shield, on the other hand, I do believe literally could be the difference of you getting home to your family or getting out to bug out. This prevents your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, uh, home generators from frying uh, when it gets hit by either an EMP strike or multiple EMP strikes or a Carrington level event from the sun. This is a three in one. It can also protect your home against lightning. Uh, but as far as you have uh, EMP protection, you have solar protection and you have it all built in. This isn't your average. Uh, this isn't your average. Um, uh, surge protector. This can ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second. So it is uh, one of the craziest devices. That is why agencies like DHS, DOD, and now the Demso team have picked them up as well. So go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Again, uh, that is code MARF, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Thank you guys for supporting us. We are on our own completely, uh, but another way you can support is sharing our stuff out with anybody you know that would find value in our stuff. All right, and then Dex, do you want to go over the explosions heard in Iran, Syria, Iraq report? So this was kind of as the initial things came out. And now it's... Uh, Oh, yeah, Somewhat actually, can you refresh that? You should see two new articles on that map page. Uh, yes, sure. Okay, and then let's pull those up, because that, that's that got to be the original one that doesn't have much on it. And I just updated a new one that came out, and I got trapped, been, we've been working feverishly between the other show and this show to try to get you guys all of the most important information that we can. Okay, there we go. So... Okay. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. It's not the uh, pocket version. I get what you're saying. Okay. So uh, do you want to? Oh, go and there should be a second. There should be a second article too. So look, um, what we know at this time is uh, they have carried out uh, a strike, at least as what they're what they're reporting. Um, there's three locations that were hit, um, in uh, in one in Syria, one in um, Iraq, and obviously in Iran. Um, the newest information that's coming out is, of course, the IDF had no comment, um, but it's clear that it happened. They, um, there was some airport closures on the early about 430 in the morning over there. Um, UAE started to divert and um, I think one of the other countries has started to divert their aircrafts out of the area so they had known. Um, the U.S. was given uh, inf was told this was going to happen, but the U.S. has come out and said we weren't involved. We didn't do anything. Um, the other things that have been stated is they did not target the nuclear facilities and they did not target civilians. At least that was what they were what in the information they told the U.S. that that was part of the um, the plan. They told the U.S. Hey, we're going to do this in the next day or so, and we're not going after the nuclear sites. We're not going after civilian, but they had to hit something. Genetically, given the size of the attack that originally hit or originally was uh, sent towards Israel. So that was the point. Now, as we know, obviously they made it in and they hit something because there's explosions reported in Iran. So um, it's the presumption right now and what some of the reporting is, is that it was a military base or military bases. Some have suggested it's where the they had launched their drones and rockets from, uh, from at least the locations, both in Syria, Iraq, as well as in Iran. So that's about as much as we have at this moment. It's going to continue to evolve. It's daylight over there. We're going to start to hear the rhetoric um, as, you know, the leadership from Iran starts to address the public. They did put up a, an alert in the country saying there was a loud noise, but they didn't say what it was. Uh, in reference to the location in the country that was struck. Um, it does seem like this is a limited strike, at least that's the, the terminology that's being used when it's been talked about from the U.S. officials as well as other um, potential Israeli officials, although they've yet to formally comment on it. So that's the latest. I'll try to put a few more links on the website, um, and, and Adam and I will get over, we'll get over all that 
after the show too. If we see anything else, we'll put it on the website for you guys so that you can have the anything that's breaking or updating on that uh, as soon as possible. But that's the current status. Somebody said that you. I, I don't know if I misheard it, but it, that you needed me to pull up the map. I think what Dex was trying to say. We have a. a it's kind of. I understood. Um, yeah, number we, two there. We have a number two there was the new. So article I, I pulled that from, up. Our map is also our source of of where we. If there's breaking news, we can add it in and we can put it here. So this map also acts as kind of our uh, foundation type thing. So if something changes during the show or Fugle Fam, you guys send us stuff. Dex can actually add that live to the show uh, and put it on the map, and then we can pull it up as as the show is live. So that is why we need you guys to send us breaking news. If you have breaking news, you can actually uh, pop into chat, say, here's this, and then we can get it onto the show as quickly as that. But again, it is live, so um, sometimes I, I won't even know about it. Uh, this is the update. As far as that's why I thought it, that was pretty outdated, because as it happened, that's actually what I sent Dex initially was there was a loud bang. Basically, all they heard was a bang. Uh, that, that's why I was like, that's probably pretty old. Um, as far as the, uh, the, the noise that was heard, that's, that's when I was on that spaces and it was like, it was heard. Nobody knew what the heck happened, but people were pointing towards the nuclear facilities. If they hit the nuclear facilities, we are in a lot of trouble. People want to deny that we're in world war three right now. Once I think the sooner that more people come around to the realize that it's not the end of the world, but it is it is World War Three. This is they're not going to call it that until a few years down the road. Uh, but this is World War Three. This is it's a scary uh, it has a, a stigma around it. World War Three is when you have all of these countries all gathering. They're all going to be uh, it's going to be this side versus this side. All of the allies versus the adversaries on both sides. It's just it's going to get nuts. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I don't think mutually assured destruction is going to happen. A lot of people ask if we think that's going to happen. It's common sense. I don't think it's going to happen. They want to take any any resources and things like that. They want to take in one piece. If anything, they will devise a massive explosive that will not irradiate things for uh, you know decades and decades. If we see that, like what Russia is building for NATO, those 30-ton boom booms, they're still not big enough to wipe out a whole state. They're big enough to wa wipe out a few city blocks, but they're massive. Uh, they might even be bigger than that. Those are scary, but that is as far as I think they'll go. They might do a tactical nuke in a very strategic place to, to start things off, but I, I nobody is... That, that's what I'm saying. They don't, they don't care, too. They would nuke the whole world if they wanted to, but that's the thing. These are greedy people. You have to look at it from their state of mind. They want those resources. They want that power. They they want to keep you around. The only reason why they want to keep you around is because they want power over you. That's that's my thoughts on it. I, I, I think there are some that probably just want to wipe you off the, the face, uh, but at the same time, then they don't have you around to, uh, to, to you know tell you what to do. So as far as uh, this goes, this retaliation is is massive. I mean, we knew it was coming. Everybody here did. You guys are the um, you guys are the lifeblood of this channel. The the Fugle Fam uh, military, the active and retired. You guys have known stuff way before, and a lot of you don't even want credit for a lot of the stuff that you've you've put forward. Uh, so again, you guys are absolute awesome people. You just want people to be prepared. So. Thank you, guys. And then second U.S. Civil War becoming increasingly plausible as more ins likely. So if that's not a, a setup for something big. Uh, now, everybody has been talking about civil conflict for the last couple weeks. The first day that civil came out in movie theaters, I actually went. And I wanted to know, like, first of all, when uh, Leave the World Behind came out, there was a lot of chatter about that because the former president was a consultant on it, made it. Uh, put very realistic things in it as far as what could happen in an event where they try to push on a civil conflict. And it's eerily similar to what's going on in the world right now. It's also eerily similar. similar the, the characters and the adversaries, the bad guys in that movie, are all of the bad guys we are talking about every day. It is our adversaries. It's it's Iran. It's it's North Korea. It's, it's Russia. It's, it's China. Uh, so in that movie, a lot of folks hyped that movie up. With this movie, it was hyped up just because of the scenery. The scenery straight up shows like backwoods country towns 
uh, but in the midst of a civil conflict and not in the 1800s, but as far as now. Right. They, and they even hinted towards a third term president, which somebody pointed out. You could possibly do a third term without doing any kind of uh, uh, constitution changing if somebody found at the very end of this term, if they magically said, oh, actually, it was right. And this term was the other person's. So say hypothetically something came out. They said, yep, actually, it was right. Uh, this person should have been that. And then they say that technically was their term. And then they serve and win the next one and they give them a pass and say, you can serve that one. And technically you are the winner of three uh, terms. That was a creepy point in that they were hinting towards that president being that. Now, after I first watched it, I didn't see it until I saw a breakdown by others. But why I'm telling you is this is that movie is putting the, the zeitgeist into people's minds. It's putting this idea in the back of people's conscious that this is not only a, an idea, uh, it, it's a reality that very well could happen. The more people that are thinking about it, the more uh, animosity that could be put up. Look at the videos that they're showing us every day of this color versus that color, this religion versus that religion, this side versus that religion, this side, uh, old, young versus old. I, I, by the way, they've shown us. Have, have you not noticed that they keep showing us 15 year olds punching grandmas? Not even kidding you. It's like straight up. There's like a uh, 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 like a category that they're putting all of these in and they all match this versus that. It's it's never like 30 year old guy punches 30 year old guy. It's never that. It's this this guy versus that guy. It's this guy versus this this woman. It's uh, th uh this religion versus that religion. It's always broken down to that. Or it doesn't go viral. We we don't see videos of a white you know white kid punching a white kid in class. It just doesn't happen. What do we see? We see videos that are are pushing this anger and just this animosity out into the world. It's really disgusting. Uh, but they are actually saying that, uh, well, and no, duh, there's not there's a, not a lot of happy people out there. I don't know if you guys have noticed, if you've gone in any me metropolitan area, there's not a lot of happy people. Heck, you open the door for people. I opened the door twice this week for uh, two different women. They actually got offended, like hardcore offended. I, it was the first time it's happened to me. I know people have said that that happens, but they were just like, oh, uh, you've, how about no? And I go, okay. And I went in first and went and bought my stuff first. I was like, wow, they're seriously offended. There's these kind of things. This just animosity between people. Not saying hello. Not saying like, hey, how are you doing? How's your day? No, it's it's more like don't talk to me or I'm going to tear you apart. That's the kind of attitude there is in a lot of the metropolitan areas. And most of it, too, is partly because of other issues like uh, the rampant uh, folks living in every cr uh, nook and cranny uh, that you walk by one street and you've been asked for a dollar or a cigarette 50,000 times. I mean, it, it's getting absolutely nuts. And then if you if you don't if you don't even if, say you don't smoke, you, uh, if you sorry that I don't carry random cigarettes for people that uh, because I don't smoke like it's getting bad and it's going to get worse. And that's what we have to pray for. Or if you have positive vibes, send your positive vibes because we all need to stop listening and watching our TVs about how we should act. And we should start realizing there's a pattern. Once people see the pattern of what they're showing you, they'll understand that you are trying to get uh, you angry. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make us incredibly angry. They're trying to divide us. It's not a it's not a cliche anymore. It's the fact of life right now. So I hope that people are paying attention. I really hope that that we can do a step on this. The the Fugel fam alone, we can be a big part of this. Just our small community. Treat people nicely. Start treating each other better. Start sticking up for each other. If somebody comes in and talks trash, it dismantle it in the nicest way possible. Don't kick the cat. But as far as the plausibility, why are they saying like the saying stuff like this? Uh, it's very, very creepy. Dex, how this broke it down, you had uh, some pretty good thoughts on how, how they broke it down and, and why they think it's plausible. Well, uh, similar to the other correlation, uh, we talked last week about the book that was written before the original civil conflict that was done like 20, 30 years before and missed the predicted year by, I don't know, 10 years or something. 
similar to the fact that we have a movie that is maybe giving us a preview to what's coming. Well, what they did was they studied the, and when I say they, this is a group out of um, California State University, San Bernardino. They had, they were doing uh, research and studying the division. And what did the division of the society look like before our, the civil conflict we had before? and in the years leading up to it, uh, in the few years leading up to it, and then and where do we stand today and what were the similarities? And that's basically what, how they were drawing their correlations, that there's a lot of similarities to that. Now, they of course show pictures. I didn't even want to show that on screen. There was so much BS about certain events in our past uh, from, you know, the, the summer of love to, you know, ch to Chaz here in Seattle. I went there, I, I did not feel I didn't feel safe uh, having my camera there. Like it was, it wasn't because I was afraid of, you know, people doing some, I was literally afraid of somebody going, Hey, that's this person. There was like this mentality. Just everybody was on the, the same page. It was super weird. Um, but that whole event, everything about it. I mean, for, for they think this was crazy, but they took over a police station. Like that's insanity. They literally took over a police station. They went in and, and, and they stopped p people from policing. Police could not police that area. People perished. A guy perished because no one could respond. I mean, like, how did they write in history that this is what happened for this event, but then for another event you see being live streamed on nine different people's things? How do you deal with it? Well, not those nine streamers gone uh those nine streams forever buried <laughs> it's like it, it, for me i watched a, a lot of the stuff live and not just like on tv inside the thing i watched every angle of it and i was thinking man this looks like a a party and and it, it's just crazy how how much that history is going to write this thing down as uh, all of the events over the last couple years. Just remember these mainstream articles that people don't say, oh, don't cover MSM. Think about this. These MSM articles are what high school students in 20 years are going to be studying as history. The people that weren't alive right now, they're going to be looking at this as fact. And that's what's so crazy is we consider it opinion, but it goes into the history books as fact. Uh, and then meteorologist warns of weather conflicts between countries what odd timing and the timing of all of these stories and as they come out and as like these little snippets get released these whistleblowers come out the timing gets crazier and crazier all the time it's kind of like when somebody goes oh yeah we should declassify something and then all of a sudden a secret payload goes up it's like you know those things are tied together uh it, 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 there's been so many instances lately like where they they say oh this really bad bacteria is out there and then all of a sudden you see an article from the cat dog cat and they're doing some big thing and and prepping for some big event it's like they always line up we have these events that we just witnessed i i, I think it's crazy maybe this has happened a ton of times before but we see uh, a place in dubai literally underwater we see planes halfway underwater we see the desert is now turning green around the holy lands uh the deserts are you know foot th two feet of water and then the next day we're talking about warns of weather conflicts between countries but of course a lot of these things usually they won't point out oh that's not related we're just talking about this it says a meteorologist has warned of potential weather conflicts between countries if this program gets out of hand. And by the program, I'm talking about the things above and and you know what I mean. It says the comet falls torrential rain in Dubai. The UAE has uh, caused extreme flooding. The downpour, which began on Monday, brought widespread disruption, closing schools, flooding homes and delaying travel. It says more than 142 millimeters of rain fell on the city in just 24 hours, equivalent to at least a year's worth of rain for the region. In recent days, there have been theories that the torrential rain was caused by a certain program of different things that fly around. And it says when they put the stuff out there, sparking the sparking rain, right? 
Well, the crazy thing is, is a lot of people have shared the videos of them straight up saying, well, this is our new program. Hey, it's really, really dry here. Not to mention, there are now public, uh, out, you know, public um, instances in multiple states, including Texas and others that have in their government websites, hey, we're starting this. This isn't what you've been talking about on the internet for 20 years. This is called, uh, we're just engineering, right? They're just doing these kind of things. In this instance, it's supposed that they did some stuff and they've been doing some stuff and then all of a sudden something like this happens. Not to mention there's rumors of other systems around the world, some in Antarctica, possibly in Alaska, you know, these kind of systems that could remotely do things like this. We've also seen, and, and this is crazy because now they're talking about weather conflicts and things like this, but we've also seen that there was claims and people that have whistleblown and said, oh, there's definitely something that can cause the, the planet to shake, right? And then all of a sudden, after that, you see this, you know, huge earthquake somewhere. It's like th these kind of things with today's technology does not sound like cuckoo tinfoil thing it hats. It sounds like it's not only possible, it's always it's been possible for a very long time. And now they're trying to sell us on it as a good thing. But look at what happens here. Dex, what's crazy to me about this is like, this is like everything in Hollywood always predicts things. There's a movie called Geostorm with uh, Gerard Butler. I think it's Geostorm. But it kind of said it showed a future of a satellite that basically uh, controls all of our weather. And it's a system that somebody hacks and basically screws with our planet and, and starts disasters all over the planet. Essentially what they're saying is that this could become our future. As if it may not, and a lot of people think that it may already be our, our present. Well, don't we have treaties in place for this uh, that are supposed to, that prove it's, it exists and are supposed to prevent us from doing it? But yeah, I mean, look, all the strange stuff that's happening, you certainly can look around and say it doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel like what we've historically felt. So, you know, whether it be, you know, what's happened in Dubai or whether, you know, it's what's happened even locally, you know, strange, massive storms or different weird cells and all sorts of things happening, even having um, the radar systems go down. Right. At, that's weird when they all go down right in the middle of a major event like that. So um, makes you question it. That's for sure. Now, I want to I want to see if I can find this thing. So. Uh, people have been talking about how uh, the the deserts are, have been green around uh, some of the Holy Lands. Now, say if you were to do a program or something that ended up, you know, basically making an area that's usually a super, super dry place, and then you start fiddling with things. You start kind of playing God for a minute. Think about this. Think about all the projects, the huge uh, mega, you know, city that they're making, this huge wall that's going to house millions of people or whatever uh, in this country. And you're like, why would anybody want to live in the desert? What if in the very short future, it's not desert? What if they have enough money to make it to where it is not a desert? That's a crazy thing to think about. What about Dubai? It's setting up all of this futuristic stuff in the near future they are able to control it and actually change what the actual place looks like. That it won't even be a desert anymore. I think like there's a lot of really, really, really weird stuff um, that is out there right now. Dex, go ahead. Do you remember the uh, plan, and we talked about this years ago, to take an iceberg or a big chunk of ice off of like uh, Antarctica and then drive it over to Dubai? And it would melt along the way, but then when it get there, it takes so many years for it to melt, but it would create like, it would change in their, um, you know, local uh, ecosystem, so to speak, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was trying to show you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this. I found it. Sorry. And uh, this is just, this is crazy. Look at this. Saudi Arabia deserts around the holy cities have been turning green. If if this is true, right? I mean <laughs> Anybody else think that this is freaking weird? I I guess I I maybe I haven't lived long enough to think it's normal. And then they deny, of course, their official thing, they deny it. 
UAE now denies it after putting out several videos and things like this took place. Uh, they denies that the stuff took place before the Dubai uh, floods, right? So they're not exactly de denying that they do it. They're denying that it did not dispatch uh, this operation, which is very public, and they have uh, models that show you exactly how it works, that they didn't do it right before this. Basically, when anything goes wrong, they'll say, oh, no, no, we do it. We just didn't do it this time. Something seems a little bit off about that, too. Uh, Jared West, thank you so much for your support tonight. I appreciate you. And uh, one of the first ones out the gate as well. Uh, let me see here. Thank you. It says, much love to Dex, Adam, and Mods. And uh, let's see here. And the Fugle fam, love coming here every night to be with you guys. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Marf and Dex, Janie Bolin. Uh, Janie Bolin, thank you so much. Uh, Richard Koschmeider, six years of good information. Dex, Adam, and Mods, thank you guys. Uh, be Real Beast, thank you so much. Marf, at what point did you become awake? Dex is awesome at his job. Same question. What is the origin story, story of Marf News? How did you meet Dex? Generally, NJM. Uh, Dex actually was helping out with our Discord that we used to run a long time ago. Um, I brought him on because he was very, very skilled uh, doing websites and things. So uh, that is how I met Dex. I actually met him through uh, Discord and chatted with him for a very long time. And we've become uh, pretty much best friends. So that is the basic story. And uh, yeah, and Marf, uh, Marfugal News started when I used to start this, doing videos out of my car. I started doing them on my breaks uh, between jobs. Um, work two jobs I would do videos every single day I would do sometimes 10 videos a day for the first two and a half three years I don't think a single person really saw my stuff until I started talking about uh, and I start I did videos for Cascadia for my family I did videos basically telling them what to do for Cascadia and that's how it kind of started so yeah for the first or I guess I guess the first two years not really many people saw it and then I had a, another channel, too, that I, I kind of dismantled uh, in the very beginning that I did tutorials and I did uh, PowerPoints on disasters. And I did them strictly for my family members. So, yeah, that's the that's the rundown. Uh, NJM, thank you for supporting. Be Real Beast, I appreciate you. Richard Koschmeider uh, and Jared West and uh, Sweatin' Ministries. Thank you, guys. All right, and then uh, moving on. Man charged with helping Russians facilitate per, uh, President Zelensky assassination attempt. So you know something's attacked. Uh, uh, something something is going on. A Polish national has been arrested after being found to have tried to facilitate taking out of Vladimir Zelensky. Known as only as Paul K., the Polish National Prosecutor's Office has announced that the man was arrested in Poland and has been charged with his, quote, readiness to act for foreign intelligence against the Republic of Poland. It has also been claimed that the man was tasked with getting military intelligence for Russia about the security of Poland's Rezvis Jasunsa airport and the help plan attack on Zelensky. A spokesman said that the findings of the investigation show that the suspect Powell K declared his readiness to act for the military intelligence of the Russian Federation and established contacts with citizens of the Russian Federation directly involved in the war in Ukraine. His task included collecting and providing the military intelligence of the Russian Federation with information on the security of Reznau Zhezhna Airport. It said, quote, this was, among other things, help Russia, Russian special services plan a possible attack on the life of the head of a foreign state, president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. The Office of the Prosecutor General, uh, General of Ukraine forwarded the information about the possibility of committing a crime to, by Palke to the Polish prosecutor's office. Then during the investigation, key evidence in the case was obtained uh, as side of part of a legal assistance. It was worth emphasizing the very good cooperation of the National Pro uh, Prosecutor's Office and the Internal Security Agency on the Polish side, with the Prosecutor General Office of Ukraine and Security Service of Ukraine. Coordinated actions of Polish and Ukrainian services allowed for securing evidence also outside of Poland. So they somehow handled this before it even happened and uh, essentially said that it was uh, planned, right? As far as what is what is the bigger picture of like why why are Polish citizens planning on doing this? I think something is probably up with this. 
Uh, and again, that quote, his readiness to act for foreign intelligence against the Republic of Poland. So he was basically uh, ready to to do something horrific. And, and there was somebody pulling the strings on this, but we still don't know exactly who. And then we have, uh, so just watch out. And you, everything out of UKR is definitely, we've got a lot of Ganda coming out. And UKR, and they are, of course, now telling us that UKR is about to lose if we don't give them money. And even if we do give them money, they're still basically going to lose. It's it, We either have to forever fund them just to keep what they have already or lose. That's some of the comments that have been said in the last couple of days. Uh, Secret Kremlin document outlines plan to weaken Ukraine's allies. Secret Kremlin document outlines plan. And, uh, uh, and yeah, sorry about that. It loads foreign policy to document calls for Russia to leverage the war in Ukraine and exploit weaknesses in, quote, unfriendly states in order to forge a new global order, which the U.S. no longer plays a leading role, the Washington Post uh, reported. It says, according to the paper, the document is classified addendum to a public document titled Foreign Policy Concept of the Russian Federation and was obtained via a European intelligence service. The secret part of the document calls for, quote, an offensive information campaign covering multiple spheres, including the military, political, economic and trade and informational psychological against what the Kremlin perceives as a coalition of unfriendly countries. It says we need to continue adjusting our approach to relations with unfriendly states. It reads adding that it's important to create a mechanism for finding the vulnerable ports, uh, parts of their external and internal policies with the aim of developing practical steps to weaken Russia's opponents. I mean, it straight up says if this is if this thing is true, they are planning. They are looking for weaknesses. They are going to be doing essentially every part of war b besides the physical parts. And this is all aligned with the timing of, of course, China working together, saying that they are hacked into our critical infrastructure. Uh, Iran is now in a full scale you know, conflict with uh, Israel, or it looks like it's going to be that within uh, days. You, of course, have North Korea pulling down all of their stuff. They're basically saying that they and uh, South Korea are done, that there's no more chance uh, for reunification. You have Venezuela voting to take over Guyana and working directly with Hezbollah and other Iranian uh, 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 groups. It's like all of this is tied in. And now they're coming out with these secret plans and these documents that say this. Now, this could very well be uh, Ganda from three letter agencies, but it, it, it definitely sounds like something is brewing. Like there's some big event uh, on a precipice just waiting to pop out. And then right hand in hand, Russia tightens officials' travel rules due to fears over secrets, sources say. Russia is making overseas travel harder for some officials due to uh, fears that foreign powers may try to gain access to state secrets during the worst crisis in relations with the West for more than 60 years. So they're actually being super paranoid about people leaving, uh, uh, specifically officials. So what the heck do they not want to get out? It, do they not want anybody to get out as far as and tell them that they are planning some sort of attack? Russia very well could be. It, it, all of their red lines that they said that uh, were that need to be passed in their own documents have been passed. Uh, the right amount of ships have been taken out. The right amount of airfields have been taken out. Uh, the the right places to be attacked. This is a day or two after the radar site got hit that actually is their protection against nukes and ballistic missiles. So their system that can shoot down and, and uh, detect ballistic missiles coming at them just got attacked and hit. So they said that that is a, a red line that couldn't and shouldn't be crossed on top of all of the other ones that they did in their own doctrine saying that this is what we would use nukes for or over. Now... They're uh, restricting travel. Dex, I think it's really weird that they're restricting their own officials. That's like they really don't want something to get out. They, they don't even want a chance of, of something getting out. Yeah, they don't. And maybe they're even scared about them getting out because uh, whether they're scared of them potentially defecting, which would be one hand, or uh, maybe they're wanting them to stay in uh, without necessarily putting up a travel advisory saying not to travel. Um, well, they are. They're saying you can't travel. Uh, because they know something else is about to go down. 
Yeah, and, and one of the quotes here is, you can't go anywhere at all, not even to Uzbekistan or Belarus for the May holidays, said one source. You can go only if you have permission. So is, if this is true, if they really are telling everybody and anybody that they can't leave as far as in their upper echelons, that, that tells me that they probably know something they absolutely do not want to get out. Or it could totally be Ganda on our end that's, you know, putting fear into the minds of people. I don't know. But preppers think the same no matter what the roller coaster is doing. You should stay prepped and you should stay planned. And then uh, and, uh, before we continue, make sure to go check out Harvest Right. A lot of you, if you haven't got into the freeze dries or if you're into freeze dry, make sure to tell other folks uh, how awesome it is to actually do. Uh, Harvest Right makes one of the best freeze dried machines out there. And again, we recommend this because it is a lot cheaper once you have uh, invested in the machine. It can actually save you a lot of money. It's not great for everybody. If you're a, a single person living in something, maybe you want to pick it up as a hobby, but it's an expensive hobby. But if you have a family of four or five, then this is definitely the most cost-effective way to do freeze-dried food. Uh, it is much cheaper because not only can you uh, get your own foods and, and as far as save as much money as you want, you can coupon, you can get whatever food, then freeze-dry it, and it will be able to be kept for up to 25 years. They say it's about 25% of the price once you have the machine 25 percent of the price of what a general freeze-dried pre-packaged meal would be so it, you also if you have dietary restrictions this is definitely the way to go because you will be able to control what goes into your freeze-dried food go to marfuglenews.com freeze you can get 300 dollars off on the pro models uh, and again that is at marfuglenews.com freeze there's all i mean there's pretty much anything you can think of can be freeze-dried uh, and if you can't, there's probably some sort of option that is close to it. So go to marfuglenews.com slash freeze. Thank you guys for supporting us. Again, we are independent. And then CIA director warns Ukraine could lose war with Russia by the end of the uh, year uh, unless U.S. sends more aid. So we've heard this exact uh, thing before. Dex, it, it's the exact message we've heard time and time again. And it's about that time where we write a check. It's fundraising time. And that's exactly what this sounds like. But I do believe there's some truth to this. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, we all know, like, they can't, they're not going to survive without us. The only reason they were able to survive is because we funded the whole thing. So uh, we funded it with equipment. We funded it with dollars and uh, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, they can't, they, they could never have survived as long as they did without us. And why should we expect they can carry on any further if we continue to hold back? That's the big question. What will we do? Our current speaker has um, put forth a plan to vote on something. So we'll see if that goes through or not. I don't know. Um, that's, that's the big question. And that's what everybody's sort of waiting. And that's why you see siren calls like this saying, oh, well, you gotta, we gotta do that. You know, you're gonna hear lots of this type of rhetoric during this period to try to drum up support for the ongoing conflict there. And of course, uh, and of course we have Northrop Grumman working on Musk's SpaceX with the US spy satellite system. Uh, aerospace and defense company Northrop Grumman is working with SpaceX, the space venture of billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk, on a classified spy satellite project already capturing high-resolution imagery of the Earth, according to people familiar with the program. The program, details of which first reported by uh, Reuters last month, is meant to enhance the U.S. government's ability to track military and intelligence targets from low-Earth orbits providing high-resolution imagery of a kind that had traditionally not been captured uh, or had been c captured mostly by drones and reconnaissance aircraft. So I wonder how many of these things they're going to end up putting up. Uh, I don't think that these are either, they're, they're not going to be very visible uh, unless the right conditions, and especially during the day, these things are basically going to be able to take pictures of your newspaper, uh, only you're not going to know that they're there. It says the inclusion of Northrop Grumman, which has not been previously reported, reflects a desire among government officials to avoid putting too much control of a highly sensitive intelligence program in the hand of one contractor. Yeah, when since when have they cared about that? They have basically five or six companies that do it all. What is it? Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, 
uh, I always forget the 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 initial one, but there's a there's about five the big ones. And if you look at the history of all of the other companies that whittled down into those five, those five companies ended up gobbling up all of the other smaller companies. You 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 can't call it a monopoly because there's five or six of them, but you basically have a single hand controlling this entire market. And out of the five, you look at the people that are on the board or that are rotating off of their board, their chair, you know, chairman positions, their CEOs, they're all ex-military or they go into the military after or they vice versa. Uh, not to mention politicians that go directly from office right into a CEO or a CFO or something like that, right into Boeing or North of Grumman or Raytheon. It's, it's insane how much this is connected to laws and bills and our politics. As far as the military industrial complex is called that for a reason. It is a very complex thing, but it's only made up of a few companies. So I'm just surprised they're even saying, uh, you know, they're putting that out there. It's like <laughs> they have most all of the control of it. It says it is the government's interest to not totally be invested in one company uh, run by one person. One of the people said, yeah, right. It's unclear whether uh, other contractors are involved at present or could join the project as it develops. Spokespeople at North of Grumman and SpaceX didn't respond to requests for comment. So SpaceX and Elon, which, you know, either people hate him or they love him and he's the hero. The ones that think he's his hero... He's also working directly with the U.S. Gov and almost every government on the world in the planet. If it's not with uh, SpaceX, it's with Tesla or his uh, brain chips or his uh, boring company, Boring Tunnels Under the Ground. Uh, also, he's got actual government contracts with his boring company, and he's making hyperloops and tunnels underground. And nobody thinks that's suspicious. He's literally making tunnels underground for the government. You could, you could say it's just for Teslas to drive through, or you could think, mm, what else could you do with that kind of hardware? But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Stephen McMahon, thank you. Let's do a quick roll call. We've got M. We have Alex Conrad, David B., Stephen McMahon, thank you. Beth, what is happening? Mitch Mouth, uh, Shastina, Lord Andrew. We have James Wright, Melissa Stewart. Uh, thank you, Scrappy Dappy Doo, for being here. Uh, Juby Joe, what is happening? Uh, J Pass, and we have Tyges and Z from Central Florida. We have Occam's Razor from Texas. Uh, we have Shastina says Tesla's laying off several thousand. I I didn't see the number; it went too fast. Uh, Mark Schaefer from North Texas. I used to be in the libraries in the house. Faith Parent from Yosemite, California. We've got Oklahoma in the house. Robert Rodriguez from uh, North Texas as well. We've got Southern Oregon. Rip Curl, nice to see you. Uh, James Odinson, thank you. Randy Man, Red Pilled from North Carolina Coast. James Damron, what's happening? Stephen McMahon, we've got Michigan here. Uh, Raquel R., Javier Aponte from Puerto Rico. Nice to see some folks uh, out in the territories. And then Conroe and uh, Ohio. Nice to see you. Got the O H I O. All right. And just Janet Ruth. We got a lot of new, new names here, guys. Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us a chance. And then Navy ships slated to help build the strip aid was forced to return to port as experts warn of other delays. So something shady happened with this. The Navy revealed that one of the ships was deployed to support the mission of building the pier to deliver aid to starving residents of the strip was forced to turn back last week after it suffered a fire in its engine room. I, I wonder, it it was this sabotage or was it something else? It says the incident comes as the Pentagon's self-imposed deadline of having a pier operational and delivering the needed aid by May rapidly approaches. The experts say that there are other delays and problems cropping up with the mission. Uh, they experienced a fire in the engine room while in transit to the eastern Mediterranean Sea on April 11th. And while the crew evacuated the area and used portable extinguishers to put out the fire, the ship had to return to Jacksonville, Florida using just one engine. So what would be the motivation to let this on fire? And then what would also, if somebody did sabotage this, because it could have been an accident, if somebody sacrificed, uh, sa sabotaged this, why would they do something like that? I, I guess where, what, what side would they have motivation to keep the people starving? 
and or make the situation look or feel worse to where it ends up having um having a response from from countries right i just wonder like what are your theories on this i think it's it's kind of weird dex why do you think that why who would who would want to light that thing on fire if if, if it was on purpose right yeah i don't that, that it doesn't make sense for it to be on purpose but it certainly it could be but we we won't know but it's also interesting because it's just one. That's just the excuse they're coming up with publicly. They're putting one thing out publicly. No, by the way, it happened last week, but they're putting it out today and they're doing it because they got to get the message out that this pier isn't going to be done. It's not going to be done in time or it might not even be done at all. And with the shift and change that's happening over there, that that certainly could be a big deal as well. And some may wonder if it was all just lip service. That could be another position like, oh, well, let's say we're going to do this because it makes us look good. And let's, you know, if the administration who is really the one behind this, the, the president was saying, I'm going to get this built. We want to get this built. So we look good to help help the uh, the people in the strip. But, you know, if it was that important, well, is it really going to happen? And why aren't they going to get it done on time? Well, I guess we'll we'll see what the response is. And then we've got even weirder weirder stories coming here. Uh, whistleblower says Boeing should stop production of the 787 Dreamliner due to safety issue. So this is the second whistleblower. Uh, the first one that we all talked about and heard about ended up uh, perished. He ended up having a weird situation right before I think a formal deposition was going to be done where they actually went in and... and uh, stated all of their concerns. They ended up uh, meeting an early demise, we'll say that. Uh, and then shortly after, within a week of that, you had the CEO step down and like the top two people underneath the CEO, the left and right hand man or woman, uh, stepped down as well. And now you have another whistleblower, a Boeing engineer turned whistleblower who contends that the aerospace giant 787 Dreamliner is unsafe to fly due to assembly flaws doubled down on the claims Tuesday, saying that the plane could fall apart and drop to the ground. And this is on top of seeing video after video of people looking out their window and seeing engine parts falling off of planes. Uh, obviously, there's been just in general with airline industry at all, there's so many videos that would make anybody who's already paranoid of flying just not want to fly ever again, like people trying to open up the emergency door multiple times uh just yesterday or the day before somebody tried to storm into a cockpit uh i think it was more than one person so it's like what the heck is going on uh and you think of something like this like this whistleblower especially after the last one met an early demise you would think even if this person i i bet you this person thinks that maybe something had you know, Boeing or somebody had something to do with the, the perishing of that, that previous guy, you would think, what would this person do? Why would it, they take the risk to do this, to, to be a whistleblower, knowing the consequences of messing with a company, a military related company like this, this big, unless there is some huge power, some rich big wig that is offering them money. That's what I wonder. I, I wonder if we follow this person in 10 years from now, are they going to have a multi-million dollar mansion somewhere, but yet not receive a, a dollar of, of money from any of these companies or any of that? It's like, how how would they get to that position? You, you wonder if this is like straight out of one of these uh, action thriller films where the big bad corporation, you know, has to, you know, they want, they want the... They want to build their huge buildings, so they're trying to get rid of the whole neighborhood type of thing. Uh, and there's one last holdout, some old lady that just wants to keep her house. It's like you think of these kind of scenarios when this when this uh, comes down the pipeline, because this is scary. Like, would you personally be a whistleblower against Boeing after that first guy? And like within a couple weeks of that first guy, I don't know if I would. But again, I I've got kids and love life, so. Uh, very, very scary claims too. Doesn't make me want to fly in a 787 for sure. And then former naval officer raises alarm about world changing underwater UFO captured on video. Uh, Dex, underwater UFOs. I think they're called. Are they called uh, U? Uh, unidentified. 
Submersible. Floating object? Submersible. USOs. USOs. Gotcha. Submersible objects. So, yeah, um, th- this is a, formal, a former um, naval rear admiral, and he helped author the March White Paper about the so-called unidentified submerged objects, or USOs, uh, was speaking in a media interview and was talking about uh, that these things are scientifically valid and they're critical to national security. I think that's the big thing. There is a video that came out. So a video was leaked uh, to uh, someone and then it was later verified by the Pentagon as a legitimate video from the um, the ship there. I can't remember which ship it was, but it was off of the coast of San Diego in 2021. So this is the object. It's flying. It moves very close to the water. It's doing things it shouldn't normally do. And then, as you will see, it disappears into the water. So I don't know if if you guys have seen this one before or not. Um, This was the first time I had seen it. Um, I've heard of these. I've I've seen other uh, instances of this. But, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily, they're not suggesting that it's, you know, little green men from Mars, but they're also suggesting it's not just some strange phenomenon, that there's something that is seriously happening here that needs to be um, brought to light so that we can understand it better. At least even this rear admiral uh, didn't seem to have all the information. And it's supposed to be um, backwards, right? So whatever is black was white. It's it's negative, right? So was that a bright, shiny object? And then as it goes off, maybe it, did that actually go into the water or did it just turn off a light or, you know, it's it looks kind of crazy. But is that a, you know, could that be a balloon or could it be a new kind of drone? Could they have made it look like something else? I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think it is a USO, a UFO, or do you think it's uh, somebody's uh, class project? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, and then uh, Be Real Beast, thank you. Thank you. I uh, put prayers out. Thank you. Um, Steve, uh, thank you for subscribing. Sarah, thank you for subscribing. Larry Gatlin, thank you. Uh, it says, you are all welcome. I'm an IT admin. I listen to the show while I'm monitoring server backups. Glad I'm in the position to help support the show. Marfugal is my number one source for news. Uh, Larry Gatlin, thank you so much, and uh, have fun with all of that. And then Swetnam Ministries. Tube is restricting my comment, but it's foretold that the grass would happen. That the grass would happen. Oh, uh, as far as uh, around the Holy Lands in the deserts. That's uh, pretty crazy. And then um, NJM, back to your, I think I missed part of your question too. It says, so you asked when I when I was uh, originally awake. Uh, I woke up in like 2003 when I was handed a, a disc by one of AJ's uh, grassroots campaigns people and they handed me a disc of like loose change and another disc that was burned onto uh, physical copies of uh of dvds and i watched that and it put together everything about 2001 and my mind was blown i think it put it together in such a way that i was like there's no way that this is like it was a very matter of fact like this shouldn't happen like this this is this uh that made me that event knowing that there was things that wrong with that event made me think then what else if if something that big could be completely not what we think it is then what the hell else is there uh, but i'm sure there's a lot of you out there that have been awake since before i was born uh, but that's when i woke up about 20 years ago which is crazy it's already been 20 years uh over on d live thank you jay winch 99 uh yet fight club we do everything that needs done zenado comet moon poco loco Sky House, and then thank you, Mud Jumper. I appreciate your support over there on D Live. And then we have doctors on high alert as a mystery cough cough similar to the CV leaves people critically ill. So there's several things here. Again, we'll go over that, and it's very alarming. Uh, But first, I do want to remind you, if you don't have food at home, we have a great discount on a great resource for you as far as uh, affordable 
freeze dried food that will last 25 years. So if you if you don't want to do it yourself, this is definitely the most affordable way because it can get extremely pricey. You can actually get all sorts of different deals, uh, but there is uh, three month packages. There's one month packages. You're always going to get a giant discount on uh, some of the the bigger packages like the three month and the or one month. Uh, but they also have smaller packages now like uh, $30 off on a one week and things like that. So go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. You don't need a code for that one. Just use the website. It helps support us and our running costs here at Marfugal News. So thank you guys. I appreciate you supporting us and thank you. And then uh, let's see here. All right. So first of all, it would not be a surprise to I think any of us, right? I've I've even heard a couple of my mods even said that they heard rumblings uh, that this this whole thing was going to come back, but this time it was going to be different. A lot of us are definitely concerned about anything ever happening like it happened before. Many people don't believe they would ever be able to do a stay at home like they did before, but I would say that's kind of. Uh, that's almost ignorance because I don't think they would, I, I would not put it past them to do the exact same thing as far as the response to what happens, right? In an outbreak that shares an eerie similarity with the arrival of CV, a mystery illness has hospitalized dozens of people in Argentina. Last night, April 17th, an alert about the V circulated via an international public health surveillance system as 60 people were reported with the sickness in the country's capital, Buenos Aires. It says when he was brought to the attention of the world in late 2019, it did so via the same database that alerted authorities last night in Argentina called ProMed. So that same system has just went off and they are following 60 people. Uh, submitted anonymously via an individual known to ProMed, yesterday's alert said in the past 30 days, there appears to be an increase in severe atypical pneumonia requiring critical care in Buenos Aires. The affected individuals are mostly young people without major risk factors. That's kind of horrifying. Uh, and this looks a whole lot, and if you look at the younger folks compared to older folks with a lot of uh, predetermining risk factors, it, it sounds a whole lot like some of the drills and exercises that were done uh, shortly, like, what, what was that, last year or 2023? Almost four years exactly after the first ones were done back in 2019, right before the first one happened. Uh, that that uh, exercise was called catastrophic contagion. Right, that, and uh, now they say human cases of the bird cough cough. Dex, do you want to go over that? Well, certainly. Now we have we talked about this as it was in Texas and other places, especially with animals, and it crossed over to one of the humans. But now the big organization that uh, W and the H followed by the O has voiced an alarm Thursday at the growing spread of this bird cough cough to new species, including humans. And they're saying that we face, quote, an extraordinarily high, end quote, uh, mortality rate. So um, it means there's, it's an enormous concern. Uh, this also coming out of the UN agency's chief. So it is a, yet another thing we've talked about it. It's not new news to us, but it's getting brought to a different level. It's being talked about at a different level now when these bigger organizations are getting behind it. So you kind of have to sit back and watch and say, okay, what are they going to do? And it makes you wonder what, you know, powers they have or are trying to get so that they can, you know, the, which as we know, anytime there is an event like the one we had in the past, it creates more powers for the people in the future to try to prevent that as they would call it, or try to control us as you might think of it. So we'll see if any of that comes from this, but let's pay attention to it. That's all I would say at this point. And at the same time, the same day, we hear about two hunters become first Americans to perish from the zombie deer disease after eating infected venison. Now, how close this is as far as we've heard, we've covered the zombie deer thing for a long time. Uh, we've also covered kind of related stories. We had a caller that not only talked about the zombie uh, deer, but also about uh, the other 
the other kind of thing, a, a tick bite that would make you allergic to meat. That's that's a, a real thing. It's pretty freaky. Uh, but this is the first Americans to perish from eating venison that had zombie deer disease. I mean, what a crazy, crazy, uh, crazy way to go. Researchers have been warning for years that nearly 100% deadly chronic wasting disease, CWD, which is terrifying in itself, if that were ever to be a human thing, which leaves deers confused, drooling, and unafraid of humans, could jump from animals to people. But a new study theorizes that it has already happened in two hunters who perished in 2022 after eating, eating contaminated venison. One of the victims, a 72-year-old man, suffered rapid onset confusion and aggression, as well as seizures. If there isn't enough on our plate, we have zombies, <laughs> or possible zombies. Uh, that's insanity. Uh, f and I don't know if there's any physical signs, but like if... What kind of hunters are these that saw a deer and it's just like walking up to them, drooling? What kind of, what kind of, uh, I guess the thought might be like, well, we cook off, you know, once we cook it, it will be fine. Like, where's the fun in that? <laughs> if it's not afraid of you standing there drooling, that's not sport. That's just, uh, that's boring. That's just gross. Like, you would think, why is it not running away? I don't have headlights on. Don't harm deer, says April Sky. Well, there's a lot. There's probably a lot of hunters here, and everybody's entitled to one side or the other. But I, I agree. I wouldn't harm a deer that wasn't running and just literally walked up to me. I would think there's no, there's no challenge or sport in that. And then uh, Angelo Perfelli, Beth, uh, what is happening? Gorilla Machinist, Occam's Razor, Angelo Perfelli, Gunny, a, uh, a, uh, A.K.A. MC. Uh, we've got Kathy Payina. Who removed that about Jesus? Jeremy, was that you? Huh. Well, by the way, there are simple things. There's no spamming. And as long as you're not getting in arguments, most stuff is okay. Uh, but we, we try to just make sure that people aren't doing things to argue with others. And then says, can we really believe this dear story? Says the one whom Jesus loved. So, uh, zombie deer disease is a real thing, but the humans dying of it or possibly getting it, that could be a, a fear thing. That's for sure. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And then thank your mods by going over to marfuglenews.com slash friends. You have access to every one of them right over there. Today, thank you for Rip, uh, Rip Curl showing up. Make sure to go check him out. Uh, Ilea and, of course, Trinity, red or blue pill. Thank you for showing up yesterday. Appreciate that. And then Jammer and, of course, everyone else is over there. So go over and check it out, marfuglenews.com slash friends. Uh, Dex, thank you so much for your service today. I appreciate you. Much love. Great job, brother. And tune in tomorrow. We're going to talk about a whole lot more. If you want to watch the newest Marfugal News video uh, short that you can share with your friends and family, just click here. Now it is time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro. Landing on them highways, watch out now, it's about to go sideways. I want jets landing on them highways, watch out now, it's about to go sideways. I want jets landing on them highways, watch out now, it's about to go sideways.